Today we're going to be diagnosing and repairing a P1009 code on a Honda. The code is often for the variable timing control solenoid that gets dirty and stuck or the screen needs to be cleaned. This here is where the VTC strainer is located. We need to remove the serpentine belt, power steering pump, as well as the auto tensioner in order to get access to it. And then further down at the back here, we've got the VTC solenoid, which has an electrical connector back here and this 10 millimeter bolt. Now the VTC valve down there is not to be confused with the VTEC valve, which is back here. First thing I'm gonna do is take off the serpentine belt. I'm gonna put my 14 millimeter wrench onto the tensioner and then use a larger wrench and pull it towards the front of the car to loosen the tension on the belt. And then I can peel off the belt from the power steering pump. Now to give me more room to work here, I'm gonna pull off the power steering reservoir and tuck that under the fender. Next, we're gonna remove the power steering pump. I'm not gonna disconnect the lines because I don't wanna make mess. There is one 12 millimeter bolt down here that needs to be removed and another 12 millimeter bolt at the back here. And once these two bolts are free, I can then remove the power steering pump and move it off to the side. Now to give this power steering hose a little bit of extra wiggle room, I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt that holds the line onto the engine. And then I can move that and move the hose around. And back over here we need to remove the auto tensioner. To get to that back bolt it will be easier if we remove this idler pulley. I also noticed that this pulley is pretty loose and it should be replaced. So I'm just going to put my 14 millimeter wrench on there and break this bolt loose. There's a washer on there and the idler pulley. Okay, there's three bolts that hold on the auto tensioner pulley. There's one at the back here, which you can't see, one in the center, and this one over here. <clears throat> there we go. And then the center bolt. These are all 12 millimeter bolts, by the way. And then the front bolt. Okay, these are the three bolts removed. You'll notice that the center bolt is longer, and the other two are the same size. And then we can remove this tensioner. You want to be careful because there is a nut here that can fall out. Here's a closer look at the auto tensioner. This here is where the idler pulley bolts in. These two bolts are for your power steering bolts. These two bolts mount to the engine as well as the center bolt. This here is where the VTC strainer is located. It's got two 10 millimeter bolts on it. What you're going to want to do before you open it is use your old underwear and put it here because you're going to make a little bit of mess with the oil that's going to drip out. All right, next we're going to remove these 10 millimeter bolts. That's the second one. Good. Here we go. And that's the strainer. All right, so here's what the filter looks like. It's actually pretty clean. I thought it'd be a lot dirtier, but I'm gonna clean this up and replace it. There is a gasket on here, so you can clean it up and reuse it as long as it's not damaged. This here's where the oil goes in, and then it comes out through the filter. All right, I ran a little bit of brake cleaner through the filter and I cleaned that up. All right, we're gonna clean this up here. Let's use a rag. I'm gonna get rid of any oily for carbon deposits. You also want to make sure that the mating surface is nice and clean for the gasket so that it doesn't leak. Just going to clean it up with some brake cleaner. And then we're going to reinstall the strainer and the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in. Now since this is a gasket, we just want to tighten this down very lightly. To give me a little bit better access to the VTC solenoid, I'm just going to remove this ground bolt here. That there is a 10 millimeter bolt that I need to remove to remove this VTC solenoid. Right, I'm going to attempt to remove that 10 millimeter bolt now. And there is the bolt. It's one of these weird ones that's got a head here and here as well. Next I'm going to remove the electrical connector for the VTC valve. There's a tab here you squish and you push the connector off like that. And that's the connector. Alright, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Here it is. There's your oil control valve. All right, this here is your oil control valve or your variable timing control actuator. It controls the variable valve timing on the intake camshaft. And what happens with these is sometimes they get a little bit of gunk in them or they fail and they get stuck in one position and that throws your engine code. Now what I'm going to do is clean this up and test it. You want to make sure you're using clean rags when you're cleaning this because this goes straight into your engine oil. I'm just going to hit this with some brake cleaner. Clean it out. Make sure these little filters on the side here are cleaned out nice and well. One of the ways we can check that the solenoid is working is by connecting it to a 12 volt battery. As you can see as I move it here, the solenoid is moving and it's not sticking when it's returning. So this solenoid looks good. Here's a closer look of where the VTC valve goes into. You want to make sure everything is nice and clean because you don't want to contaminate your engine oil. You also want to clean out that electrical connection with some contact cleaner from all the oil deposits. Now before reinstalling the VTC valve, you're going to want to clean out the port before it goes into. Now it's probably a good idea to clean out this electrical connector with some electrical contact cleaner. 
That's because it gets coated with so much oil. Now according to the manual, there is supposed to be an O-ring on the end here, but my bet is it's stuck in the engine. Once everything's nice and clean, we're going to put it back together and replace the VTC solenoid. I'm just going to install the VTC valve and then we're going to reinstall this electrical connection. That's it, nice and tight. Alright, with the electrical connector in, I can go ahead and replace this weird looking bolt. Alright, I finally caught the bolt, I'm just going to tighten that down. And we'll just snug that down nice and well. Don't forget to replace this ground connection. Alright, with the oil all cleaned up, we're going to next replace the automatic tensioner. I'm going to use a long 12mm bolt in the middle. Catch that first. And then catch the other two 12mm bolts on the sides. Then we're going to go ahead and tighten down these 12mm bolts. Just nice and snug. Alright, next we're going to replace the idler pulley and its 14mm bolt onto the auto tensioner. And then I'm going to put my wrench on there and tighten it down nice and tight. Then we're going to replace the power steering pump and replace the two 12mm bolts. First one at the back here and the second power steering bolt down at the bottom here. Then we're going to go ahead and tighten up these power steering bolts. And the one at the bottom here. Next we're going to replace the serpentine belt. So again we're going to use the 14 millimeter wrench and the extension wrench to pull the pulley forward and loosen it while we slip the belt on. Okay, belt is on and release the tension. Next I'm going to replace this bracket that holds the power steering line onto the valve cover and put in the 10 millimeter bolt. And then replace the power steering reservoir back onto its bracket if you removed it. With everything all buttoned down, we're going to start it up and see how it sounds. Once the engine has warmed up, you're going to want to check the BTC valve and strainer for leaks. Alright, next in order to get the check engine light to reset, we're going to clear the codes. Now if you go to live stream, you can see the VTC status is currently off at idle. If I rev the engine, you'll see it turns on and off pretty quickly so we know it's working. Now with the engine light reset, all we gotta do is take it for a test drive for about 20 to 40 kilometers and see if the engine light returns. Now one very important thing when diagnosing the VCT valve is to measure the engine oil. As you can see, I'm just a little bit below the low mark there, so I'm gonna top it up. That's very important on cars with variable valve timing. So I've driven over 3,000 kilometers and the check engine light still hasn't come on yet, so cleaning the VTC valve was indeed successful.